My name is Kenneth Bennett. Um, I come from a single parent home, uh, three other siblings, two brothers and one sister. Um, I was raised up in the Oak Cliff area, and it was it was it was kind of hard, you know, being uh, without a father. And I learned early in life about about the Word of God, you know, about God, but I never had a relationship with God. And so I began to be rebellious. I began to hang out with gangs and and, and see what the drug life was about. And in that in that time, my mom did all she could. You know, she said all the prayers she could say. She did all the whooping she could do. You know, it was only so much that a mother could do. It was only so much a grandmother could do. And so I ventured out. But one particular moment that I can remember was February 15th, 1989. I was 17 years old in, uh, in Joppy, in the South Oak Cliff area. And um, a situation happened where my friend, we got robbed in a trap house. My friend was shot in the head, killed on the spot. I was shot several times and left for dead. And as I laid there in this, this big puddle of blood, and I could just hear a voice telling me to get up. And, and that voice, hearing that voice and not seeing nobody gave me the strength and the energy. I, I rose up and I looked around and I didn't see nobody. And then I, at the moment, I didn't know God was working. His angel was on the scene. I didn't understand the spiritual things at that time. But one thing I did understand, I didn't want to die in that state, not in a sinful state. I knew that much. And God gave me strength. I made it across the street to the other house where the paramedics find me. And when they put me in the ambulance, as we traveled, I kind of blanked out. And all I could see was a bright light. And I heard this voice, and the voice was like fading, telling me to go back and tell them about God's love. And I guess that's why I'm here today, to not only tell you about the love of God, but to show you that I'm alive today. God loved me that much that I'm alive today to share my story. One wound I was sharing, well, 50% of my wrist was shot off with a shotgun. I had a hold of my chest about this size from the shotgun wound. I was shot right here on the side, and I was shot right here with a Tech 9. I was shot with two different guns by two different people at the same time. And these normal wounds for somebody would normally they would be dead for a 17 year old. But it was by the grace of God, you know, I had a lot of internal bleeding and, you know, a lot of organs was damaged. And I thank God you know, for the grace of my life when I even think about it as I speak. When I made it through that incident, I had to go through several surgeries all through the night, in and out of surgery, you know. And, and, and one instance where I was left all alone, I looked at the Channel 8 News. It was on all the news stations, my name being, and they were saying that I wouldn't make it through the night. And all these other things that the devil was throwing my way, if I make it, I was going to be paralyzed the rest of my life. And, and so many negative things were thrown my way at a young age. What kind of interjected my faith is my mother, Deborah Bennett, she came in there and they told her, I said, go ahead and see your son, go ahead and talk to him, he's not going to make it through the night. And I, the doctor was like standing over and I heard the doctor saying this. And my mother came in, she wasn't crying, she wasn't hollering, she wasn't weeping. She came over and she touched me and she said, son, I'll see you when you get out of surgery. So just, just that, I was like, wait a minute, mom's not crying, everything must be all right. She said, Mom, grandmother and them, they're in the other room praying. Everything's going to be all right. So that took me back to my roots of seeing Grandma pray, seeing Mama pray, and what prayer will do. In 92, I went a whole year, didn't get in trouble, so I was just out. Now it was like, man, I keep on playing and crossing the line. They're going to send me to prison. So I stayed out a whole year in 1992. Come 1993, I'm, I'm well, you know, I'm back. One of the young guys that, that rang with my little brother and rang with me, it was a robbery took place. My name came up. <laughs> I had a choice. Uh, you know, today's society they had a stigma like you snitch on somebody, snitches get stitches or whatever. And I had a choice. Well, I can tell these people what they want to know and they finna let me go. Or I can uh, hold my part of the responsibility because I'm not all the way innocent, you know. I knew about it. And, uh, and go ahead, you know, take the fall. And that's what I chose to do. I called my brother, I called my mom, and I called the glue that actually robbed the guy. And I told him what I was gonna do. I took the case, I wound up getting 35 aggravated years stacked, uh, was ran concurrent with 20 years. So instead of having 55 years, I was given 35 aggravated years. And that was in uh, 
1994, I was sent to prison in July of 94. While I was on that prison bus, my trip down to prison, they called the Bluebird, my whole trip down to prison, I'm thinking, God help me through this. And this was one time in my life I didn't ask God to get me out of the situation. Whatever it was I was in the face, I had to go through this. So I got down there and got down to prison, and I was down there in Chasefield in Beeville, Texas. And I was like a boot camp type of deal. And then, right then, God started showing me what my purpose was. He started bringing young men to me that was going through the same situation I was going through. Lacking attention from their father, love from the father, affirmation of the father, a relationship with the father. And not only the biological father, but the heavenly father. I was ministering and didn't know I was ministering. And the more I was doing, the more I was going closer to God, the more I was getting in the Word, back in the Word, reading the Word, praying, fasting, and letting my faith. My mind wasn't even on my time because I had already asked God to take me through it. I got to go through the process. Everybody has a process. So I stayed a year on, on the boot camp. I was sent to the, the Cunning Unit. It had just opened, went over there. And for most people, you know, they be in prison, gloomy and sad, and they was looking at me, man, why you all happy? Why you all jolly every day? You in prison, man, you got a bunch of time. Because they didn't know what I know. I had the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord was my strength. Well, well, God gave me this vision, man, and, and when I was getting ready, like when everybody was telling me, man, it's your first time in prison, you got 35 aggravated, aggravated robbery, you've been in and out of jail, you got a long history. Yeah, parole is not going to grant you parole on your first try. And everybody was going on parole, coming back, denied, 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 denied. That's all I was hearing all around me, but I stood on my faith. God gave me a, a vision, a dream, and it was like he showed me the officer that was going to give me on parole lay in, and he showed me the officer was going to give me my parole lay in for me to be free from prison. And I went and told these, I, I wrote it in the Bible. My mom has that Bible to this day. I wrote those days. I even told her. God showed me I was going to have a, a black female parole officer. She was going to be a Christian. I wrote all that in the Bible because I wanted to make sure I wasn't tripping. I wanted to make sure I was hearing the voice of God. So when these events took place, man, and, and one of the officers that brought me my release parole, he knocked me. He said, Miss Bennett, he said, remember when you told me about it? I was going to? He said, here it is. I said, is that it? He said, I immediately fell on my knees and began to thank God while he was standing right there. So that was God doing. God was using me to speak to correctional officers, even in prison, because I never shifted, I never changed. They seen me the same way every day, singing in the choir, on the basketball court, playing with the Christian softball team. I was the same, and I never let my mind be on my time. I always kept my mind on Christ. That's where my peace came, when I stayed focused on Christ. My name is Kenneth Bennett, and this is my story. I pray it be a blessing to those who hear it and see it. God bless you.